start recording and um, I'm going to now hand over to to Eileen um, stop sharing Sorry. Um, Okay, if you give it a few seconds, it should... No, I've loaded the wrong thing. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> uh, loaded file. There we go. And Eileen, it'll be over to you in a moment. I will switch off my mic. Thank you, everybody, and thank you particularly to Ina. Sorry, picking up. With um, thank you, Ingrid, for that introduction. Just one small alteration. You said Rhodes Library Research, raising the visibility of it. It's actually Rhodes University Research, Rhodes Library. So just that small correction. And welcome to everybody who's listening. Um, I presume that none of you were at the Liasso conference when I gave the presentation of the same title. Um, if you were, I'm afraid you're going to have some repetition. But um, I've, I've used that as a basis for this presentation, and I've also incorporated some of the material that I had in the presentation during Open Access Week, which was given during our symposium. Um, but the, the basic material is much the same as we had at the answer. Okay. I can operate. I see Karin says she cannot hear. Eileen, do you want to just speak into your into your mic? Let me move the mic. Is that better? Much better. Much better. Okay. The mic had sort of slipped under my chin. <laughs> okay, great. Um, as uh, the introduction indicated I'm going to be talking about altmetrics and also about using social media and in particular about an experiment which I've been conducting over the last year I suppose it is at Rhodes University using Twitter. So I thought uh, obviously that the two subjects tie in together so I'm starting off with a, a brief introduction to altmetrics. Um, some of you I'm sure know a lot about this. It may be new to some people. Okay, as uh, Ingrid mentioned, we all know about the traditional bibliographic methods of evaluating research, the citations, and the poor old scientist sitting there pleading with somebody to cite his, uh, research, his or her, I should say, research. And then, of course, H indices and all other sort of indices, and then our journal impact factors. And we all know how much money we have to pay to get these citations from uh, Thomson Reuters, etc. So let's look at something a bit different. These traditional bibliometrics have been supplemented over the few, last few years by the development of altmetrics. Alt and um, you can see on the screen there is a link to the altmetrics.org site. Please do go and have a look at that. There's a lot of information there. But basically, a definition, the creation study of new metrics based on, social, on the social web for analyzing and informing scholarship. In other words, people want to look at the impact that their research has had out there, not in the traditional citations of articles, but what is it doing out in the world, out with, um, I always say, real people. <laughs> Academics are real people. Um, but what impact is it making in the world, on the ground, at grassroots level? And altmetrics is one of those ways in which you can, you can actually estimate what is going on out there. Um, I've had very little positive response from academics about so using social media. Do, should, or will social media feature in academia? I think they should, and I hope that by the end of this presentation you will agree with me. Everybody okay? I've heard some noise in the background. Okay. Um, this was a quote from an article you can see at the, bit, at the bottom was written in 2010. I think this was by a, a director of a library somewhere in the States. I can't remember which library it was. 
And uh, she was talking about this very thing, social media and scholarly communication. And uh, I noticed there she says at least two UK-based vice chancellors now have a Twitter following. I would love to do a, a, a research, well not research, just a, a questionnaire into our VCs here and see how many of them have a Twitter following. It would be very useful. And as she mentions in there, and I'm going to dwell on this a bit later, uh, about publishers providing the fora for sharing research, quite an important development. Okay, well, when I started doing this, um, I thought, well, I really should talk about our academics using social media. And I was fortunate just before the Liasa presentation to come across this article which was published in Nature, I think it was in August 2014, so it came right on time, about a survey which was done amongst academics to see what they are doing with social media, Twitter, blogs, etc. And the survey was sent out to, ooh, I think they said 10,000 or more people, and they got 3,500 responses, which isn't bad, from a, a, across 95 countries. So what did this research show, this, this survey show? Um, this is actually my sort of thumb suck on it. I, I did a very rough estimate of the percentages. The order of popularity from 330 regular visitors to um, social media, and you can see straight away Google Scholar is one of the first ones. Their research gate, you can see I included a whole lot of different things. Um, this was based on the, on the obviously the organizations that the Nature Survey included. And research gate I was interested in now features very high on there. And I'm sure a lot of you have found that many of your researchers and postgrad students too are joining up with research gate. And uh, we certainly find that at Rhodes. But, um, I want you to look at particularly Twitter. 12% of those uh, visitors use it. But what do they actually use it for? And in the survey, they, they did a, a pie chart on each of the different social media. And this was the one for Twitter. And the reasons for using Twitter from those 330 regular users from the 3,500, you can see the percentages in the, in the blue box on the right. Follow discussion to post work, discover papers, peers, comment on research, and share links to content. So academics are using Twitter particularly, and obviously many other things, in their research and to raise the visibility of their research, also to communicate with their peers. So I thought that was an extremely interesting survey. Please have a look at it, if you can afford to subscribe to Nature, that is. <laughs> it's quite a useful article to have a look at. Okay, so to go back to the whole uh, idea of social media, the new tools that we need to measure. There are so many social media choices out there, as you can see from the illustration there, Twitter, Facebook, blogs, etc., etc., etc. Totally confusing, and I think a lot of academics and researchers are confused about which is the best one to use here. And a lot of them will probably just stick to one or two, like Mendeley or maybe um, Twitter. Not many of them, I don't think. It would be interesting to know what, what the majority of them do use in this country. So how do we measure the impact? And how does this research, is, it, is this research communicated and shared, the academic research shared and communicated via the web? Um, Altmetrics came along. It was decided that it was a good thing to be able to measure this type of impact of research. And we needed a totally new approach. So Altmetrics came up with this. And we're going to talk about the developers of Altmetrics a bit later on. So a completely new approach to determine the quality and popularity of research. Um, perhaps something that's not been so visible or so needed in the past before um, the web came along with all the bells and whistles and all the ways of sharing. So how does the value is assessed within Altmetrics? You do the tally up count the shares, the saves, the reviews, the adaptations, etc. And I put that third point in, and I based it, as you can see at the bottom, on an article by uh, Stacey Conkiel. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She has written an article, and she's writing quite a number of articles at the moment. She's just moved across to Impact Story, about which I'll speak later on. But Stacey had the, an article, and I've taken some of these points from her article with her permission, I might add. Um, and she says that it is no, Altmetrics is no longer a fad. And I think I do agree with her. It's becoming more and more obvious that people are using 
um, social media in their research and to, to uh, distribute their research. And in particular, as point four mentions, outside of the academy, as I spoke about earlier, what is, what's happening at grassroots level? Who's looking at, at academics research outside of the academy? Stacey mentions there are, of course, limitations. Of course, there are, li there are limitations all, all in the traditional bibliographic uh, measurement as well. And we need some way to distinguish between, as she puts it, scholarly and sexy research. It's also vulnerable to gaming. I suppose an academic can pay a postgrad student to sit and uh, tweet their research endlessly and get it out there into, into the um, logosphere or the twittersphere, etc. But um, there's always ways to cheat. We all know that. But basically, Databases and publishers are now coming on board with altmetrics, which proves to me that I mean they are, are um, actually uh, in this for their own benefit, corporate, uh, commercial. So they are actually, as it were, jumping on the altmetrics bandwagon, which proves that there must be something in it. So I think librarians need to sit up and take notice. The origin of the term altmetrics was back in. 2008, I think, originally. But this uh, tweet by Jason Priam, he's one of the sort of main movers behind altmetrics, is sort of looked upon as the origin or the coining of the term. He coined the term altmetrics. And um, it started off as article level metrics. But um, it seems to have settled down to being called altmetrics. Okay, so who is actually sharing, collecting these alt metrics? I've listed three people here. I think these are the major ones. There may be others for all I know. But certainly alt metric, it's an organization. You can see the definition of it over there, what it actually is. And there is a URL that you can go to. Um, then Plum Analytics. And as I was mentioning, uh, alt metrics is now becoming commercially viable. And you might know that EBSCO has actually bought out Plum Analytics and are now offering it to their customers. So they also follow follow these um, alt metrics. And then Impact Story, this started off as a very small uh, group, I think. But it seems to be growing. And they've got some significant funding, which I'll show further on. That is the place where that um, Stacey Conkiel, I mentioned her article in the previous slide. She is working for Impact Story. She's just moved across there. And she's a librarian, by the way. Here are some examples of altmetrics. Um, the three that I've mentioned, what you actually get offered on there. Um, you set up your profile. You go in, you look at your article, and you get these um, st statistics of how many has been tweeted, how much has been blogged, etc., etc. So just to give you an idea, they're all measuring similar type of thing. Um, what I came across when I first started uh, this experiment that I was, I was doing with tweeting research was this very, very useful altmetric bookmarklet. And you can see I've given you the URL there. It's got a little bit jumbled in there. But if you just search on Google for altmetric bookmarklet, you can find that. And as you can see at the top there where I put bookmarklet in toolbar, you can drag the altmetric bookmarklet into your toolbar. Now, this means, as I've demonstrated on the screen, I'm in an article here on Science Direct. If I want to see whether that article has been registered somewhere on the altmetric stats, all I do is click on the toolbar where it says altmetric, altmetric it. I don't know whether you can see that. It's a little bit small. And on that little box on the right-hand side, you'll see a little blue donut -y type thing. And that is the stat for that particular article. And you can see here it says it's tweeted by three, six readers on Mendeley, and trying to read it, naught readers on Sci Life. And the bottom arrow there, if you click on there for more details, I'll show you on the next screen what you get from that. I can find the arrow. There we go. OK, so this is from the previous screen. There's your article, the Mozambique channel, etc. And you can see your, uh, this is in this case, Twitter. Um, it's been tweeted by three people. And I wanted to just keep an eye on that first one there. That is the one I'm going to be talking about a bit later on our experiments at Rhodes called Rhodes Research. And you can have a look at the score and the demographics. Obviously, demographics is going to tell you where, where in the world your tweeters have come from. 
So that's quite interesting to see very often. Right. Here's another example. I mentioned earlier that publishers were now including altmetrics. And Nature is an example of that. You can see this is an article about the Cedar camp. This is, uh, there was one, I think there are about 35 authors to this, but there are a couple of them from Rhodes University. And you can see on the, where it says, note the article metrics option. So every article you open up on Nature has an article metrics option. So when you click on that, you get um, this. Very similar to what we saw on, on the previous screen with altmetrics. This is the demographics, Twitter demographics. So can you see on the side there where the people come from? You've tweeted, they give you percentages, etc. You can see in the middle it's also news articles. So this might, the article might have been mentioned in a news, scientific news blog or whatever, Google Plus, etc. So it's telling you all sorts of things about the reach of your article. And this was a very popular article, coelacanth, I suppose. It was about the, um, the genome of the coelacanth. So it was quite a topical issue at the time. OK, and in fact, here is the altmetrics one for this particular article, African coelacanth. And you can see on there, uh, these are the news ones. So you can see it's reached various news sites. And on the mentioned by, you can see the number of um, stats attached to each one. And at the, at the, when I put the slide up, there were 582 in the score on the altmetrics donut, as I call it. OK, those of you who use Scopus, I don't know whether you've noticed, they have recently, probably within the last month or so, included a, an altmetrics option at article level. So here we have an article. This one is published in Public Library of Science 1. And if you go further down on the same page, you will see that they offer on the side there altmetrics for Scopus. And very similar, I'm sure you're becoming familiar with what this looks like. In this case, this was, hasn't had any tweeters, but it's had 29 mentions on Mendeley. So an academic can look at that and say, oh, someone's sharing my research on Mendeley. OK. Um, you can also click on there for more detail and exactly the same. You can get your demographics, etc. But what I wanted to point out on this slide particularly, it's a very useful thing which academics can do. At the bottom there we see the, the blue arrow. It says track this article. And it says, I don't know whether you can read that, it says get email updates when this article is shared. So you can actually click on there and you can register for email updates. And when somebody shares, tweets, blogs your article, etc., you will be notified by email. And that's a really uh, interesting thing to have. So academics can actually personalize the whole thing and get um, statistics in their, e in their email of what's going on in the blogosphere, Twitter sphere, the altmetric sphere, I suppose you could call it. OK, and here's the demographics for this particular article. This was not the coelacanth one. It was something from our ichthyology department, I think. And you can see uh, there's been quite a lot of influence in, in North America. Because, yeah. OK, and then the Mendeley readers for that same one. And then you can click on there and actually go into Mendeley and see more detail about who the people are, etc. So it's, it's all intertwined, as most things are these days. OK, to go back to Impact Story, I mentioned them a little bit earlier on. There's the, the Stacey Conkiel at the bottom there, and there's Jason Priam. He's also in there. And as you can see, young people, keen, enthusiastic, and they started, saw the need for Impact Story. What it does, oh, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, they started with a really impressive support rate. As you see, they got a $500,000 grant from the Sloan Foundation that was soon after they started up. So they must have uh, seen, the foundation must have seen some value in that. And you can see it's supported by various other organizations. So what you can do is you can register on academic, anybody can register on there for a, for a research profile. This is uh, just an example that they always post. And you can see the uh, website there where you can go and register. And what you do is similar to ResearchGate. You can um, upload your whatever you want, articles, data sets, figures. You can see on the left down there, slide decks, posters, whatever you want to do there. But you want people to notice, and you want to find out who's noticing them. And you can see uh, this particular research has got quite an impress impressive following. And you can see on the left-hand side there, 
um, what's been going on with his, his metrics. Um, you'll see at the bottom there's a little orange block which says try Impact Story for free. Uh, when I first joined Impact Story a few months ago, it, they, they were not asking for payment, but they are, have since then decided to ask for $60 per year, which is probably not much uh, for Americans, but it might not be so uh, little an amount for people in the developing world. So I was a bit disappointed about that. But what I did discover after contacting them was that they have a no questions asked option and if you um, want to register on Impact Story and if you agree to uh, include your impact profile uh, in your signature on your email, they will happily uh, give it to you for free. But you can start trying it for free. So it might be a good idea to alert your academics to this and to ask them to register for Impact Story and see what they think of it. They can try it for free. I think it's for a month. So, um, and also, obviously, librarians uh, who are doing uh, papers, uh, presentations, etc. Very good way. I often find it's a good idea to experiment with these sort of things before launching on, on the academics and telling them about it, because then you've got proof of how it works. So that's Impact Story Profile. And um, this is just the URL for those who didn't get it on the previous page, or if you just type Impact Story into Google. And this is one of their mottos. They actually hand out little stickers like saying, I am more than my H index, which I think is quite a, a good one. OK. We've been talking about all these YouTube statistics, but what on earth are we going to do with them? I'm sure some of you have heard of, of Cameron Nalon. He was at is very much involved in open access. And you can see at the bottom, he's actually recently written, uh, uh, this was a blog on the London School of Economics um, page. Altmetrics can signal flows of information for paths in scholarly communication not yet mapped. So I think we're looking to the future with this. And these are points that he mentioned in this article. What could these stats, what do they do? What can they offer? What could they offer? What will they offer? And uh, he's listed these few points there, and I've actually uh, sort of put them straight from his article. Just to give you an idea, it's making awareness, evidence of awareness, of communities that are using a specific paper. Is the research having an impact? Is it having an impact in the public sphere? As I mentioned before, not only in academia. And he also talked about about this pathway for research to reach a wider range. And comparing readership article across countries, that's quite an interesting concept. And then communities. Is it out there in the, in the press? Is it in communications? Is it policy makers, government, whatever? These are what these uh, types of stats can tell us. So that article is also well worth reading on, on that blog site. So uh, the link is at the bottom if, if you want to follow that further. OK, the future of altmetrics. Again, this is from the same article. And I, I quoted him. He's saying, these numbers are signals of the flow of information down paths that we haven't mapped. So the possibility is out there. It will be interesting to see what happens in the future. So um, I've just put a few of the, the points from his article there. And um, just have a look at that and see what you think about it. It's really great. And I'm hoping to get some, uh, in, some response from the people who are watching this to see what you think of this idea. Does Archmetrics have a future? OK. Um, now, at the Open Access Week, I, I included this uh, uh, slide in my presentation. It wasn't on the LIASA one. Um, open Access plus social media equals a competitive advantage. So um, I particularly dwelt in that presentation on if you're tweeting your open access stuff, everybody can read it. You're making it more aware. So they can find, people can find research in, on the uh, Twitter sphere, the blogosphere, etc. And also, of course, if it's open access, they can find your research by just searching on Google or Google Scholar. So um, there was another article which I came across, and that was back in, in 2012, which I thought was quite interesting. People were starting to talk about that thing several years ago, about social media, and uh, by somebody called Table. I put a link down the bottom there. And the benefits of all this tweeting and blogging, etc., for academic societies, for journals. 
Okay, and this uh, James Baum, he used to be the social media assistant at Biomed Central. I don't know if anyone, everybody's familiar with Biomed Central. This is uh, all the Biom Biomed Central research is freely open access available to anybody in the world. And I was quite interested to hear that they had this actual position called a social media assistant. He's since left there, but this article of his, um, it's really a blog as well, contains some of these points. And he's uh, stressing in this how you can, through Facebook and Twitter, etc., uh, draw people to your website, draw people to your research, etc. And he claims here that 25,000 visitors to Biomed Central research papers per month result of Facebook and Twitter. So I think that's quite a significant figure. Okay. Um, there was also a, a conference very recently, I think it was last month, held in London and sponsored by the Wellcome Trust around the whole topic of altmetrics, which again says that uh, it is an important um, thing to be talking about. The Wellcome Trust is very much into, I think, it's pharmaceutical research, etc., and they've thought fit to sponsor this. Do have a look at that. There's some um, useful stuff at, at those URLs which I've pointed out there. Okay. Um, a colleague of mine recently uh, pointed out to me uh, in the downloads, this was on the social sciences section of Science Direct, the, the top 25 downloaded articles. This is in the second quarter of this year. Three of those were about social media. It's, it really is a topical issue. People are researching that and we need to actually, as librarians, get on top of this and see how we can use social media. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> the sort of response I've had from academics I've been talking to about social media generally. So what? Why should I care? I don't have time. I'll pass on this one. They're not interested. I'm hoping that in the future this will change. And as a <laughs> possible example of uh, hoping to change, I have done the rest of the presentation showing you how at Rhodes University we are actually uh, using this social media to highlight the research of our institution. And I'm going to go through quite a number of sort of very nitty gritty uh, slides on showing you exactly how we do this. Um, there's our website there, and if you go through the, I think, to the next site, we've been using social media, as I'm sure you all are. The arrow is pointing on the right-hand side of our library web page to our, our um, social media site. You can see we've got our Follow Roads Library. And then Follow at Roads Research is the second Twitter one there. This is what I'm going to be talking about. And then, of course, we've got Facebook. And then down the, the bottom three, the, the three blogs that we're running at the moment. But I'm going to be talking about at Rhodes Research. Um, OK, what is at Rhodes Research? Um, it's a Twitter account, basically, that I started up last year. And what the idea is to actually tweet articles, conference papers, theses, etc., reports that are put out by Rhodes academics and also postgrads, postgrads and uh, research fellows, etc. So all those, as they come through, are tweeted on Ro at Rhodes Research. You will be seeing screenshots of it later on. And then we also retweet them on our subject-related Twitter account. So for example, I'll show you some, some shots of it. We have, say, a pharmacy uh, Twitter account, Pharmacy News. If a pharmacy uh, academic publishes an article, it's, it's tweeted on at Rhodes Research, and then it's retweeted on the Pharmacy News one. And those Twitter accounts in, in uh, the for example, the pharmacy one, are embedded into our subject lib guides. So we're increasing visibility all the time. And then the subject blogs, for instance, I have a science and pharmacy blog. And at the end of every month, I actually put out a listing of all the research from science and pharmacy. And then we can retweet those on Facebook and Twitter. I'll show you examples later on. OK, so this is what the At Rhodes Research Twitter account looks like. And you can obviously go and have a look at it for yourself. I initiated this as an experiment in May last year, as I said, with the sole purpose of promoting Rhodes research output. Um, I feel very passionately about this, because I think that South African, and obviously African, and perhaps in the developing world, research is often lost. Um, 
perhaps it's not indexed on the major databases. It gets lost out there. And this is my small <laughs> experiment in how, how to get the news out there that South Africans are doing good research. OK, so how do I source it? Um, we are spreading this out, I might add, to our other faculties. So they will be uh, science, education, law, etc. Humanities will be treating research as well. But I've mainly, mainly concentrated on science and pharmacy research. So I set up alerts to Rhodes Affiliated Research, as I'm sure you all know you can do on the various databases, Web of Science, etc. And then every time new research, which is affiliated to your institution, is published, you get an email. And then I work from there to go to the article level and tweet it from there. And then other sources, I keep my eyes open for what's going on in departments, on their websites, etc., talking to researchers from the Rhodes University web page, even in the media, by word of mouth, and then also Google Scholar alerts. And I'm sure you can think of lots of other ways where you can source uh, what's going on in your institution. OK, here's an example. Also on Science Direct here is an article which has been published by someone in our chemistry department. And what I do is I use the DOI. Uh, Science Direct, unfortunately, unlike Nature and various of these other publishers, has not in incorporated on the Science Direct platform an option to share. So what I have to do is just cut and paste the title and then the, the DOI back into the Twitter account. So um, this is an example on, uh, what is this, is this Springer? I think it's Springer, Wiley Springer. Um, and you can see they have actually incorporated the share options. And more and more of these people are doing that. So it's, it facilitates it. And it really makes it so much easier if you can just click on the share option down there and go directly to your Twitter account or your Facebook or whatever you're using. Hashtags. I'm sure we all know what hashtags do. They make your tweets more visible. And I suppose it's. Uh, I like this because it fits in with librarianship, where you put all the same things in the same place. <laughs> so if with a judicious use of hashtags, it makes it so much easier for people to click on something and collect everything. So what I did was I standardized a whole lot of hashtags for our various science departments, which you can see there. So for biochemistry, we have hash RU Biochem. Or in this case, hash R-U-I-W-R. In the middle, that's our Institute for Water Research. So if somebody clicks on that hashtag, they will get all the research on that account from the RWR. And then, of course, the, um, in the, inside the Twitter, the hashtags, this is really a, a use. You, know, you have to decide what you're going to actually use. So it's up to you to decide what is the most important aspect of that article. Um, OK, I mentioned our subject. Uh, Twitter accounts. This is in my biochem news one. And what I do if, if somebody in the biochemistry department published something, it's on at Rose Research. And you can see where the arrow is there. I've retweeted it from there onto the biochemistry Twitter account. And here's a pharmacy one. Also retweeted from at Rose Research. And here is an example of our pharmacy lib guide or subject guide. And I've embedded that uh, pharmacy news uh, Twitter account in that. So if, some, if somebody goes into the pharmacy guide, they automatically see those tweets. And this is my blog for uh, pharmacy and science, where I regularly tweet the, uh, the publications. This is the October list, so it's right up to date from a couple of days ago. And then people can actually go in there. And then you can actually tweet the blog as well. So you can do what you want with this. And what I've done is also I've tweeted it on our Rhodes Library Facebook. So you can see here this was done actually this week. See what Rhodes Science and Pharmacy Postgrads and Academics published. So uh, people can go on there and see that list in the blog. And then again, I've also put it on there, which was from August, in our library Twitter account. OK, so what is the interest in Ats Road research? I did a little bit of analysis. Um, at the time I did this, we've got, we had 289 followers on Ats Road research. And I'm glad to report that we've got three more since then. <laughs> most of them are Rhodes students. Well, not most of them. Quite a number of them are. There are only about 20 Rhodes academic and support staff. Um, quite a number of professional research organizations, not only South African, from around the world. Same with publishers, journal editors, 
journalists, media organizations, quite an important one, and then academic librarians from outside Rhodes, and then obviously individuals other than Rhodes staff and students. And I did a, a sort of a breakdown of these, just to give you an idea of the people who are following at Rhodes Research, and I think it's quite interesting. What I want, why I put the number of followers on the right hand side is to show the potential reach. Um, for instance, uh, I'm looking at that one with a very high number of followers, 4620. If someone at, I don't know what ISS stands for, but it's obviously an organization to do with fisher research, etc. If they tweet something from our ichthyology department, it has the potential of being viewed by close on 5,000 people who are following their Twitter account. So I think it's quite significant to look at this and see who, who the people are. And I'm glad to see, Ina, that ASAF is following us. <laughs> Here's some more of them, Research Africa. I'll put ASAF in there again. And you can see the number of followers there. And these were organizations. And then I went down to publishers, journal editors, etc. And I was very thrilled to see, I don't know whether she's on here, it might be on the next page that um, being followed by there, Sarah Wilde, who is the science editor for the Mail and Guardian, and she has two and a half thousand odd followers. So this is also quite important as well. You can get your research noticed out there in the media sphere. These are individuals. I've sort of done a short analysis of who they are. So you can see the type of people who are following this. Oh, I see Caroline Deans there. Um, and obviously, the retweeting is the really important thing here. If you get retweeted, obviously, you can go out there and it goes on and on forever, hopefully, and at the potential of reaching a huge audience. OK, there are some sites. Um, most of them you have to pay for, but uh, Twitonomy, where you can actually analyze what's going on in your account. This is just an example of what this one called Twitonomy offers. And I'll put the URL there for people to have a look at if you want. If you want more information, they ask you for payment, but you can see, get a basic idea. And then another one called uh, Analytics, Twitter Analytics, and they analyze your followers. You can see here the type of people who are following it. They, they analyze what city they come from, and so on, and your profile followers. OK, so what reaction did I get from the res? Uh, university community. <laughs> I indicated earlier that I didn't have very much, and uh, this is exactly what happened. Um, it looks a bit dismal on the left-hand side. Polite enthusiasm, mild interest, etc. Faint enthusiasm. I have advertised this several times at our science faculty uh, meetings and have not got a very enthusiastic response. But then on the right-hand side, I've had some really great response um, from individuals. Um, doing exactly what I, what I put on there, thanked me for doing it. They show a bit of interest in using it for their department. This was our environmental science department. And then uh, our HKE, Human Kinetics and Ergonomics Department, head of, head of department, was really enthusiastic and has been sending me a lot of her post-grad presentations to put out there. And I think that's quite significant because a lot of post-grad stuff probably gets lost and, and nobody knows what's going on there. And then just recently, a new development, in fact, only yesterday, I had an email from someone in, in the pharmacy department who wanted to know how I, could, how I um, could help her promote her research in this type of way. So there is a movement out there that people are interested in doing this. So that is really great, and I was quite encouraged to hear that. OK, so after getting this rather dismal <laughs> reaction, I decided that it called from some, for some creative guerrilla marketing. So what I decided to do was email, every time I emailed, uh, I tweeted an article, I would email the, the researcher or researchers involved and say, are you aware that your article is now on at Rhodes Research? This was one that I sent to a history um, lecturer, history researcher, and as you can see, I pointed his article out there. And I thought, oh, well, I wonder if he's going to uh, respond to this. And I note the time, 11.16 AM on the 11th of September. And here's his response. Four minutes later, and I was so uh, encouraged by this, uh, he is a very enthusiastic man. <laughs> so I take it with a pinch of salt. But it's really nice to see an academic getting enthusiastic about something like that. 
And then I also uh, sent one to a chemistry researcher, more reserved this time, but he actually uh, raised the level to quite exciting, which I thought was rather nice. So I am trying to make people notice it out there. OK, just to come to the end of, what, of this presentation, what do I think about it? Is it worth continuing? Um, as I say, I started as an experiment, and I was all on my own. But I think that my fellow librarians here at Rhodes are going to carry, uh, carry on with this. As Ingrid mentioned, I will be retiring, and I have 21 more working days left at Rhodes University. So I'm handing the baton over to them. One of the major things that I have found here is that third point, the enhanced engagement with research and researchers. It has really been such a privilege to sort of go perhaps at a deeper level to see what people are researching there, having to actually analyze what they're researching when I tweet it and say, OK, what are, the, what are the relevant things that I need to hashtag on this? So I'm getting to know, and then I, I know what they, they're talking about. It fits in with my selective dissemination of information. If I start in current awareness, I know what they're doing. It is time consuming. It's an added dimension to my job responsibilities, but it's interesting and stimulating. And also providing an opportunity to engage with this developing field of altmetrics. And I really have found it so interesting to do this. Um, I realize, of course, that Rhodes University is a very small university in comparison with some of the ones that you are at. And obviously, if you did this type of thing, you would have to split up uh, the uh, burden of doing this type of thing. I have been able to cope, I must say, with a lot of overtime work in doing this just uh, in the last year or so to see if it would work. So I think in future we'll probably split up um, the, the subjects in the science faculty between various librarians to carry on with this. Um, I've put a list of references there if anybody's interested in following those. And then I just want to thank you for listening. And just recently, this was last week, in fact, or the week before, I mentioned the, uh, the lecturer who sent me her postgrad presentations. I hadn't had any of those. So this is hot off the press. We're now trying to include postgrad presentations. We had an interdisciplinary uh, postgrad conference at Rhodes recently, and these ones came from that conference. And as I said on here, I'll, I'll answer any questions. But I also would really like you to um, give your reactions and comments. Either type them in the box. Abby, and thank you very, I'm very, very happy much. to hear of um, um, And as I said, feel free to contact to me, but not after the 15th of December, because I won't be around. <laughs> thank you. So let's see what comes up there um, with some questions or comments. Um, Are your librarians using social media among themselves to share knowledge? Question from Abigail. Um, oh, yeah, we try to. We have a staff blog which, I mean, it's not enthusiastically <laughs> supported, but we're trying to work on that. But I think it could actually get a shot in the arm. <laughs> it is indeed exciting times ahead. Uh, I'm just trying to look at everybody's comments here. How do I? Oh. Yes, I'm not. I'm. 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 No, I'm not seeing any questions. Sorry, I'm, I'm just seeing that everyone is, yes. is is typing. Um, Joyce, you do have the mic. If you see a question, Ingrid, please tell me because I can't. I don't know whether I'm seeing everything. Joyce. Um. Right. Um, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Joyce. Uh, the, Joyce is what's okay. the best way of encouraging librarians um, to follow? Like this to way, I think, is my example. <laughs> Kelly, to thank you for this amazing work. Um, you, you're doing such an amazing Hello, work. Hello, Joyce. And we do hope that um, as much as you say you're retiring, 
you don't really retire with technology. You, you will definitely continue and you will continue to, 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 assist, to, to assist some of our librarians because I think this is just great for the country. Yes, but on behalf of Helix, I will be... Well, now, what, what on earth am I going to tweet in my vegetable and garden, also, Joyce? <laughs> I, I see that Ines posted a question. Um, Eileen, do you think it would be possible to... She says, Eileen, do you think it would be no, possible pleasure, to create an altmetrics profile for a journal title instead of for an author to demo the altmetrics impact of the journal title? Yeah. Journal title? <laughs> yes, yes. I have no idea. I have no idea. Sorry on that one. I'm trying to think. Chandra has said trying to work out Can you hear me? how it will work for public libraries. Yeah, sorry, I, I really don't know. Maybe open access journal or somebody from your town. Hmm, that's an idea. You can you can open it. You can open a Twitter account in your public library and tweet the new books that are coming in. At events, it's the difficulty uh, is as as library. you mentioned and as I think Synovia is saying. The limit basically um, with social um, media. But we, you yeah, think we sometimes find do. that the librarians are not enthusiastic about it. Um, I almost want to say you either get it or you don't. <laughs> yes, I know, I know it is a problem. I'm not great for Eileen to workshop research yes, librarians I think to come right. on board. <laughs> Yeah, either you're right, librarians are going to stay behind. I mean, that, that's the one great thing about the work that we do. There's all this. I'm retiring. This, there's always something new. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, uh, yes, if, yeah. if, if you don't want to, be, you'll see that there's a little in, man at the top of the the top of the screen um, where, you, on, can, where you can where you set your status, <laughs> and you can actually there's a little tick button there that says agree. Um, you can tick it, and there we go. Oh, um, we'll 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 finish in a moment. We'll let there are a couple of more people typing, um, and we'll are we doing for time? Give. I no. will then um, um, save the chat on here, and I will go in and and get the recording put out and the and up, upload your presentation to the to the to the to the Helix SlideShare account and then we'll make those of, we'll make those of all three of those available. All right. Thank you very much Eileen. Okay, great. okay, the next the next one, the next Helig webinar is in two weeks' time and it's yeah. going to be a conversation okay. about digital humanities. We'll be sending out Thank you. the registration Thank you for and, and more information in the next few days. Probably Monday or Tuesday. So you can watch out for those. Yeah.